And hello, everyone. Between the Slicks, live from the Strip at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Lee Craft here coming to you from Las Vegas, Nevada. And uh, we have stayed over from the national event. Looking forward to regional and divisional action for the NHRA, the last regional of the year, in fact. The last opportunity for alcohol to compete outside of a national event where their last national event in competition will take place in Pomona, California, just about a week away. Good to have each and every one of you watching along. It's good to be back on live with my show, Between the Slicks. Got to do a better job next year of filling in the gaps, and we continue the episodes and continue the storylines in drag racing with, I think, one of the most diverse shows that there is in drag racing, talking to people from all over the world of drag racing and the world itself. And in fact, tonight's show we're going to have international flavor tonight. Uh, maybe not the Vegemite flavor. Granted, she is from down under Miss Fiona Crisp. We're going to have her on live chat with her concerning her drag racing career, where it has started, where it is, what her aspirations are. And you can see there on the bottom her home ride. And then there on the top, she came over this year. Second time she was over in the States racing with Randy Meyer Racing and competed at Tri-State Raceway in Iowa in regional action and then her first national event ever at Maple Grove Raceway in the World Champions ride. Julie Natus and that car that she usually pilots, Fiona Crisp, was driving. And we will chat with her on her experiences here in the States, her experiences back home, and just how good it is right now for Australian drag racing. She was there in attendance recently at a grand opening for a brand new track there in Australia. And they had, I know at least one day, over 20,000 in attendance. Always a good word when you get a word like that concerning drag racing, that brand new track in any location, they have 20 plus thousand people show up. Again, there's plenty of signs throughout the world of drag racing that it is doing just fine. And it is growing and it is expanding. And there is no need to lift up the signs that Armageddon is near for drag racing. No, it's perhaps far better to lift up the sign that drag racing is alive and well. So we'll have her on in about 30 minutes or so and chat with her. Before then, let's talk, well... Drag racing here on Between the Slicks, brought to you by Destroyer 1320 and their theft deterrent systems. We'll be talking about that later on. Eric is actually in Las Vegas at the SEMA show. The SEMA show is going on, and I have not attended the SEMA show. I have been doing other things this week. I may very well in the future attend SEMA. Just right now, it just kind of doesn't interest me. Granted, there is the NHRA stage, and I probably should have just went to the NHRA stage, set up a chair, and just watched everything and took everything in. There have been major announcements made. You all know that I have a particular passion with alcohol. Some interesting announcements with the top alcohol classes, in particular top alcohol dragster, have been made at SEMA for that class, concerning that class, rolling into 2024. So let's talk drag racing. Let me go to the comment section, see what you all are saying, and let's start from there. Greg Wilson, hello from Lorne. Let's see, NSW, that's New South Wales, right? New South Wales, Australia, I believe. Doug Core says, yo, what's up? Noel says, I'm watching, and Doug uh, freezing up. Let's Shows that I'm good on my end. Maybe it's your end, and maybe by now it's okay. We'll see. Hey, going live. Stuff does happen and does occur. So good to have each and every one of you along. Hey, let's talk drag racing. What is going on in the world of drag racing? The NHRA, Nevada Nationals, wrapped up, well, not Sunday. Yes, for many categories, it did wrap up Sunday such as the Camping World Series. They wrapped up on Sunday. But many other categories in the Lucas Oil divisions of NHRA Drag Racing had to complete their race on Monday. And for that action, uh, you can check out the Monday Morning Racer YouTube channel, in particular with alcohol, because we were here on Monday to cover 
top alcohol funny car competition and top alcohol dragster competition to the end and you can see that action on the monday morning racer youtube channel and actually there are reports following from qualifying through round one through round two semifinals on to the finals even though it got a little wonky because of the weather issues that plagued uh, Las Vegas this past weekend. A lot of times people come to Las Vegas, they think desert, they think hot, they think dry, which is accurate depending on the time of year you're in. But that is not all that can take place here. It can get cold. Matter of fact, the times that I have spent in Las Vegas this year, and oddly enough, I have spent more time at this drag strip than any other drag strip this year. Rolling into this weekend, I will have been at Las Vegas, the strip at Las Vegas Motor Speedway, more than any other track this year. Even the Texas Motorplex, which is like my de facto home track somehow now. I was here for the Spring Fling Million, which is a spectacular big money bracket race. And that was another event where it got cool. The sun would go down, and you were putting on the hoodie, you were putting on the gloves, you had the beanie on, and the wind was blowing, and it was chilling you, even in the desert. And uh, then here for the NHRA National event, the four wide here at Las Vegas, and roll into this latter half of the year here for the Nevada Nationals, and we'll be here for regional action this weekend. So... This year, Las Vegas gets the crown for the most attended drag strip for the Monday morning racer. And a great, fine drag strip it is to attend. But you can have weather delays and issues, certainly, here in Las Vegas. Is it going to be rain? Well, more than likely, no. It's not going to be rain because we are in Las Vegas, Nevada, and situated in a valley that doesn't get much rain at all. But the wind can and does often pick up and that is what stopped racing action saturday night dust storm rolled through dust drag strip top alcohol funny cars doesn't work out fairly well and then it became too cool on sunday night to finish racing and in fact there were two pairs of super comp dragsters that during the middle of the track they were getting squirrely. Okay, super comp dragsters getting squirrely. They're usually planted straight as an arrow. Not a good recipe for faster and quicker cars coming up after them to send it down a slick, dusty Broadway strip at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. So to the winners of Top Alcohol Funny Car and Top Alcohol Dragster, congratulations and that would be in top alcohol dragster jackie frick a perennial championship contender she wins in top alcohol dragster and then it was sean bellamere i'll upload the photo here right now sean bellamere he picked up the win for the killer bees in top alcohol funny car competition the pirate ship once again takes home an NHRA national event, Wally, and they are undefeated on Monday, whether it's a scheduled race or an unscheduled appearance on Monday. They won the U.S. Nationals. They won Maple Grove. They won here in Las Vegas. If they have raced on Monday, they have won it. So, yeah, don't face those guys on Monday. They tend to do exceptionally well, congratulations to Jackie Frick. Congratulations to Sean Bellamere. We'll go back to the comment section. Oh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Uh, Greg, looking forward to hearing uh, Chris. Yes, looking forward to Fiona. She'll be on in now about 20 minutes. We have our guests on the back half of the show. Uh, looking forward to listening to Fiona. Uh, QLD Australia. Now, I'm not familiar with. QLD, unless it's Queensland, maybe. Maybe that's an abbreviation for Queensland. You know, chop in, uh, type in and let me know if I'm anywhere close with that. All right, Andrew Osterhouse. Thank you, man, for watching. Thank you for commenting. Thoughts on the Dell? Uh, let me bring up the comment. Thoughts on the Dell Worsham announcement? Would love to see him more next year. All right, so on that... And I will go through some of the particular announcements that I found interesting with 
the SEMA show, all right? Now, they have been streaming for hours. Uh, my buddy, Warren Evans, that I work with so often, whether it's Funny Car Chaos or even when it's NHRA.TV or NHRA YouTube stuff at regionals, it is, it is uh, a long stream. So I haven't seen everything, but I've been able to get some snippets. And again, I cover a lot with alcohol, so I'm going to give some alcohol snippets in particular from SEMA over everything else. There haven't been too many major announcements, I would say, or I feel at least, and I haven't caught the stream today for NHRA at SEMA. It's very much so status quo. It seems like you get more major announcements at PRI, Performance Racing Industry Summit, if you will, there in Indianapolis that coming up. That's coming up in December. So expect major announcements there. But yes, they did announce Dell Worsham will be running at Pomona this last race of the year in the, in essence, what is the backup car for Alexis Joria? Granted, the backup cars are just as good as the primary car. Beal Racing is going to be assisting the crew duties, turning around duties, the fielding duties for this ride. And as you can see, Eris, CP Carrillo, Bandero on the car. That's going to be a good looking hot rod, too. I, you know, we don't have a top of the livery, but. The, the the blue and the white with the black and the white on top and the geometric designs and everything. It, it just, to me, looks fast sitting still. That is going to be a good-looking hot rod for Del Worsham. And good to see him back behind the wheel. It has been a while. Matter of fact, I am not shocked by the announcement. Monday, there was testing taking place in conjunction with the wrapping up of the Nevada Nationals. And I could tell with Alexis car that, hmm, that's probably not a Lexus in it. Just the way that people were around it and kind of like checking in and watching, this wasn't a typical test pass for a Lexus. Someone else was in the car, and it makes sense now. It was Dale testing the car on Monday, getting prepared for the ride at Pomona for the NHRA Finals. Good to see him back. I don't know if it's going to be something that we will see him next year more often. Uh, like you mentioned there, Andrew, I hope it is. Maybe it is to showcase that they're capable of running two cars. And by showcasing that they're capable of running two cars, therefore you can go hunt for some marketing partners and have him out there competing even in a partial schedule. That would be cool. I think that's good for the sport when you have someone like Dale Worsham, uh, you know, a legend, back out behind the wheel of a funny car. And it very well may help Alexis. It may give them just a bit more in-home data concerning tuning setups that are in-house and not just the collective Toyota data that they're able to feed into and pull out from. It could be also that type of scenario. You know, I also have seen some make the remark, oh, is this for blocking? And I think that's a bit absurd. Uh, you, the one that he would be blocking for, if at all, would be Ron Caps. Ron Caps is nearly mathematically out of it going into Pomona. It would be a, a miracle for him to come away with the championship. The big three on that, we're really looking at Robert Hype, Bob Tasca, and Matt Hagen, the major players going to Pomona for the uh, Campy World Series Funny Car title for 2023. I think we underestimate at times, though, whether it's a Jed Coughlin Jr. coming back for the race here at the Nevada Nationals and also there for the NHRA Finals, or a Dale Worsham coming back for the finals, that drag racing is fun, that getting behind the wheel of a nitro-burning funny car and attempting to qualify and going over 300 miles per hour and doing it within 1,000 feet, that's just cool. And I bet that's a heck of a rush that you can't get nowhere else. So I think we underestimate at times just maybe these people just want to come back and have a good time. You know, I was able to interview Jackie for CompetitionPlus.com in a peak pit note that will come out later, hopefully, on CompetitionPlus.com's YouTube channel. And he was just having a good time. He was great. He was excited to be back at the track. 
Uh, he was jovial, and he was in just... I'm not saying that I've ever seen Jackie upset or in a bad mood. Honestly, I never have. But he seemed like he was really enjoying himself this past weekend. I think we underestimate at times that, hey, it's just fun to come back and be back at the track in a national event, in the spotlight, and willing these race machines. I think we got to remember that. So, yes, Dale Worsham is back for Pomona. Very well could be a precursor to more, which would be exciting to see. Uh, very quickly, some of you in the comments section, and this has been covered in SEMA, so I'll make these remarks. Uh, for example, where was it? Ah, Greg Wilson. Greg Wilson says, or asks, did I hear Julie Natus isn't racing next year? Well, if you heard that she isn't racing next year, you did hear wrong from wherever you heard that. That is inaccurate. And I will also say that most of the announcers for the NHRA have been inaccurate for several past weekends as well. We got a lot of clarity from Miss Natus this week from the SEMA show. Uh, granted, when you look at the when you look at the <clears throat> National Dragster article uh, earlier this year, I don't remember which issue it is. I don't have it in front of me. It's back home in South Carolina, and here I am in Las Vegas, Nevada. But uh, earlier this year, there was an article that came out concerning Julie, and it was a big part of it was what's the next step, and she was clear that she does want to move on. She intends to move on. Uh, she came to the United States of America to pursue her drag racing dream, and a part of that dream, the ultimate of it is to get to top fuel, or now, because she likes funny cars so much, to run a fuel funny car. And in that article, which I would have to go reread, people have taken a lot of information, and I do wonder if they have read into and have taken it too far and there have been such statements as it is championship or bust, for example, for her in alcohol. She's moving on regardless, and that is not the case. Julie was clear yesterday on the NHRA stage, being interviewed by Tony Petragon, that she is back with Randy Meyer Racing. She will defend her world championship title. So to Mike Allen, who's going to win the alcohol dragster class championship, Julie, Julie already did. She wrapped it up in Texas, and you can go back to the Monday Morning Racer YouTube channel, and you can see the reports from Texas, and you'll see that played out, and you'll see that covered that she wins the championship. We have an interview with her winning the championship, and she did go on to win the event and interviewed her, and also got Thomas Natus on camera, which I was excited to do, her dad, and chat with him very briefly. But Julie is back, and she mentioned that she intends to license in a top fuel car or a fuel funny car next year. That is what was expressed on the NHRA stage at SEMA. So, uh, Greg, look, thank you for your comment and uh, certainly hope that that answers it very clearly. That's what's happening with Miss Natus, uh, as we can see uh, right now. More info from SEMA concerning alcohol in particular. Uh, Jackie Frick, she said that she is working on deals for 2024 that are bringing on more marketing partners. So that's you, Mr. Fink, Fink Racing and Equipment, and then Jackie's own, Jackie's own accelerated travel, if I remember correctly. Uh, she has like a travel agency. She books rooms for you know, teams uh, from going race to race. Um, those programs feed into their program. They do pick up marketing partners from time to time, but it sounds like they're making a concerted effort to find more marketing par partners and be more potent in the world of NHRA drag racing. Uh, Jackie Frick is a perennial championship contender. Uh, I, I suspect next year she will be right up there in the top five once again. I also suspect that by next year she will have a Matt Cummings voodoo doll because Matt Cummings has been her Achilles heel. Everywhere that Matt Cummings has showed up, Jackie lost in final rounds and semifinals. It, yeah, she hates that green car. I am sure of it. 
what a neat little rivalry we, we have between Matt Cummings and Jackie Frick, both people out of the uh, Northeast, and uh, they uh, routinely face each other. It's also strange, Jackie, she wins two national events thus far this year, and both of them are on the West Coast. She wins up there in Seattle. She wins here in Las Vegas, Nevada, and she is from New England. I mean, go figure. How does that work out? So be on the lookout for her at Pomona and see what they are able to do. Speaking of Pomona and going back with uh, Julie, well, Randy has never won Pomona, Randy Meyer Racing, and Julie has not won Pomona, and Julie counts Pomona as her de facto home track. That's kind of where she kind of, that's kind of where she landed first, if you will, from Norway. And she went to school in Southern California and then attended a lot of races in Southern California. And Pomona's that de facto home track. And she would love to pick up a win there. Randy has never won at one of the most, if not the most historic facility we've got, the longest continuous operating drag strip in the world. Certainly he'd love to get a win there. So, uh, she said they were actually testing here at Las Vegas to be prepared for Pomona and give it all to get a win at the finals. Now, continuing with the word from alcohol there at SEMA, uh, yeah, don't be shocked if Megan Meyer makes the NHRA comeback. Don't be shocked if you hear a name more often next year, Denny Jensen. She earned her last license with Randy Meyer Racing, actually here at Las Vegas, earlier in the year. And she did compete in a regional, kind of kept it quiet. Denny's got experience with front engine dragsters. And a mom, realtor, uh, athletic young lady, and be a good addition to NHRA drag racing for sure. Don't be shocked to hear Denny Jensen next year more often out there in NHRA drag racing. So a lot has been announced for alcohol, strangely enough, at SEMA. That has been good to see. Let me go back to the comment section. Thank you to each and every one of you commenting. Please keep doing so. Hit that like button and hit the share button here on Between the Slicks, episode 149. Jeff, let's take your comment. It was a hard secret to keep. I kept looking at the mock-up of the paint scheme and wanting to tell the world no blocking he just wants to run in front of family and friends yeah i mean it's i i have seen people mention the blocking and it's just like well, that's strange again people want to race and as you mentioned between you know in front of family and friends uh it's hometown race and you get an opportunity to go racing in a time in the sport where things are on the rise it's just i mean you take the opportunity i mean if someone gave me an opportunity to race a fuel funny car i'd say yeah i mean why, i mean take a crack at it i mean duh and if you're someone like dale an absolute legend in the sport yeah you're going to take a crack at it so good to see him back out there uh scott hey hey scott thank you appreciate the uh super comments and super chats thank you appreciate it a lot he says your coverage of the alcohol classes has been outstanding Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, hopefully can work it out with the NHRA that it's a bit more official for next year. We'll see how that works out. Uh, I kind of do it under the radar, and I'm like the redheaded stepchild of the NHRA covering alcohol. I, they just don't know quite what to do with me. They might just tell me to shut up for all I know, but hopefully they'll approve it next year, and it will be a better arrangement even. I definitely think alcohol deserves it. And a lot of the people in alcohol have enjoyed and been very appreciative of that extra coverage. Uh, Drag Racing Mayhem. <coughs> Dale coming back is strange. Is there a plan for that team to field a second car in the future? Well, no further announcements beyond that. It might be somewhat of a field test for that. But who knows? It might just be a one-off deal or we see Dale come back you know, every now and then, uh, which would, would be cool. Uh, whatever they're doing... Let's say this, if we just look at Pomona without any other speculation, it's good to have Dale Worsham back behind the wheel of a fuel funny car and be out there in the field at his hometown race, Pomona, California. Oh, right, let's see. Walter, love from Michigan, go Detroit Dragway. It is heaven with Lions Dragway, 
Wally. Well, look, Walter, thank you for commenting. Appreciate it. Uh, Andrew ask another question here. Do you see any rides available or coming available for some of these free agent drivers? I just don't see any open seats. Well, on that, Andrew, I'd say, no, there are no open seats, especially in professional drag racing. Really, the idea of open seats, there's no such thing. Uh, you, honestly, in professional drag racing, you pay your way into a seat. There's very few hired drivers. There's very few situations where you have a team looking to hire a driver honestly i would say the best example of that and maybe the only example is coletta motorsports with connie and the rest it's a situation where you have an individual uh, crafting together marketing partners for them to be able to be in that seat or they are in an owner driver scenario and situation like a ron caps or an antron brown so the idea of silly season that you might see in F1 or in NASCAR, that's not really the case with NHRA drag racing. You get silly season by marketing partners shift with the personalities they want to be with or who has come on board with that person. I think a great example would be Alex Laughlin. He has marketing partners and great marketing relationships with Haplin and others. He brings that to the table to Jim Dunn Racing last year and has continued that out. All right, very quickly, we got Fiona in the green room. We'll be bringing her on in just a few moments. Jeff, food for thought. Let's see what his comment. Look at all the talent around Scrappers Racing. Mike letting people license in his top field dragster. And Travis, Julie, and some others, could we see the birth of a mega team? Ah, yeah, no, I think that's a great comment. I think that's a good thought. And been thinking that myself, uh, Mike can certainly uh, do it. You know, Valley Services is one of his companies, Scrappers, his deal. And you certainly could see a situation where it is a super team under Mike Salinas. You know, I, you know, you, you mentioned Travis, Julie, they have a close relationship. I wouldn't be shocked if Julie licenses in a Scrappers top field dragster in the future. That wouldn't shock me at all. Granted, she's got great relationships elsewhere, too. So she could possibly license in several other cars. But I, I could see that happening. And, you know, Travis owns his own top field dragster now, but it is certainly aided and helped by Scrappers Racing. And... Mega team situation could be in the future for Scrappers Racing. And when when I say mega team, maybe you are thinking along the same lines, but with it being Mike Salinas, him out here Monday actually being on a Pro Stock motorcycle bike himself along with his brother doing some test hits that we're talking about Pro Stock motorcycle uh, pro Stop Motorcycles, we're talking about we could see Pro Mods because he has a Pro Mod. We could see Fuel Funny Car in the future. No telling what Mike Salinas could work out. I do know this. I, Mike is an intelligent man and a hardworking man, and I think it has to make business sense. And I think that the future, if there is a, it ever is a me mega team, it will make sense because it made sense business-wise. All right, let's take a break. Right after the break, we're going to get Miss Fiona Crisp on and chat with her about, well, what we're chatting about, and that is drag racing in particular, in particular with her and what it looks like for her in the States, what it looks like right now down in Australia. This word from Destroyer 1320 here on Between the Slicks. If you own a beautiful modern muscle car like this 1320 Challenger, I'm sure you don't want it stolen. Because the Challenger and many other modern vehicles have an easily accessible neutral release strap. That was your coin holder in your central console and beneath that there's this red cord that someone can pop, put it in the neutral and potentially easily steal your car. But at Destroyer1320.com, they have the TDS theft deterrent system, which is a cover over that strap using factory mounting points so that you don't get popped by a thief. 
So make sure to go to Destroyer1320.com using promo code MMR for 15% off and get your theft deterrent system TDS and steal the thieves' hope. Well, hello there, you beautiful Ranga. <laughs> you remember. <laughs> I do remember. I do remember. Look, let's start there. When I say Ranga for the American audience, what the heck am I actually saying? <laughs> a redhead. <laughs> ah, yes, very good, very good. Yeah. Yes, very good. So, you know, here in the States, we might say carrot top or, you know, something of that nature over there. Uh, Ranga apparently connected to orangutans, which is far more derogatory than carrot top, <laughs> uh, for sure. <laughs> Fiona, look, good to have you on. Good to meet you earlier this year in the flyover state of Iowa. Let's let's start there. Iowa. Iowa. What, did what you a place. Think? Um, they told me we were racing in the cornfields and we literally were racing in the cornfields. I thought they were not being serious, but they were. Um, we got there, I had a look at the track and Megan and Matt had both said to me, it's a pretty narrow group. They weren't wrong. It's very narrow. Um, but the facility itself, all the staff, everyone who worked there, they were amazing, but it was an eye-opening place to race at. That's for sure. Yes, Iowa is eye-opening regardless, even when yeah. you're from the United States of America, to see the sea of corn that is in that state. Beautiful state, but it is, especially Tri-State Raceway there near Earlville, where the Field of Dreams is, for anyone that doesn't know, you're out in the middle of nowhere. Literally, and I did find out about Field of Dreams, so one of the crew guys took us for a quick ride, and we went via and took some photos and then went back to the track. <laughs> but, but have you seen the movie as an Australian? Yeah, so it's actually really popular. I have seen it. So my dad loved it. So my dad was a big fan. So when I told my dad that I was writing dreams, I think he could have been slightly more excited for that than the top alcohol race. <laughs> <laughs> very cool. Very cool. Yeah. So uh, there is there's another international driver that has been to the field but hasn't seen the movie. And I'm like, well, that doesn't make any sense. You got to see the movie for the field to make sense. So you got right. it right. You got to see the you got to see the movie, then you got to see the field. That's the proper order. So there you go. I there did it go. the right way. Very good. You did it the right way. You did it the right way. So you know, moving on from Tri State Raceway, you participated in your first ever NHRA national event there at Maple Grove Raceway. So Iowa to. Pennsylvania, just outside of Reading, getting in Philadelphia-esque area, right. is a dramatic change. What do you feel yes. about that area? It was actually really cool the way we did it. Randy organized so that, so that I could go in the motorhome, and we just went across with the team um, over there. So, you know, I got to go through a lot of different states, which was cool, places I hadn't seen before. Um, Pennsylvania is so beautiful the area where the racetrack is is stunning just surrounded by trees the racetrack is like i just couldn't believe the breaking area just all the trees that were around it. it's actually a really pretty area um but completely different there were no cornfields to be seen i was like wow this is a completely different like scenario everything was completely different but it was really cool to see the the competition at an nhra national event the the level of if you will, pageantry and the pace, completely different than a regional that you participated in Tri-State Raceway. Uh, describe the differences and describe the challenges of an NHRA national event from your perspective. Yeah, it was really cool to see. It was my second time doing a divisional. So I did Topeka last year as well. So I had a bit of an idea of how sort of the divisional side of it went. Um, a little bit, obviously more laid back. Um, you don't have the whole fanfare and the large crowds there. It was a really cool experience. I'm really glad I did it. Everything was just on a bigger scale. Obviously, there was a lot more competitors. You know, Top Alcohol is a 16 car field. And I know not just at the Reading race, but at many races, they're getting oversubscribed fields. And that was the case with that event as well. So I was a little bit nervous going into it. I was like, all I want to do at this point is qualify. Um, but yeah, it was just such a cool thing. And, and I have to say, every racer I met, was so welcoming, whether they were in top fuel, whether they were also in, you know, racing top alcohol, whether that was funny car or drag star, um, everyone made an effort to come and chat to me and welcome me and made me feel like 
try not to think about what's happening around you. Don't let that distract you and just do what you're here to do, which was really cool. Well, that's that's good to hear. I mean, we like the people who talk funny over here just as much as anywhere else when we travel abroad. So I'm uh, glad that you were well received. And, uh, you know, you were driving in the car that Julie has won the world championship with. So Julie wasn't there racing, but you did have a legendary teammate in Mike Lewis that went all yeah. the heat won with NHRA. Did you pick anything up from him? Mike was awesome. He was so like giving with his time and just to chat to him about his racing history. Um, I didn't know that he had raced a fuel altar, which I thought was really cool. So we spoke a little bit about that. Um, and, you know, he was just very generous with his time and offering us to, you know, come over and hang out with their team in you know, their area and introducing me to a lot of people. Um, and we've actually stayed in contact. He's reached out a few times to, you know, hope I'm doing well and things like that. So I'm um, glad that I got to race alongside Mike. He's, he's really professional. He's very focused um, and he's very popular with the fans, which was cool to see. He certainly is. It was a cool deal for him to be with Randy Meyer Racing, also participating earlier this year with Samsel uh, Racing. You had a first round matchup. You did qualify first round matchup with Tony Stewart, drag racing sensation this year in 2023. And uh -huh, I know yes. you do have you did get a photo opportunity with him. What was Tony Stewart like? Tony Stewart was great. I met him before the run, um, so that was cool. I mean, one thing about Tony Stewart is he's very famous. So you know, he's got camera crews following around and there's people everywhere. So I was a little bit hesitant to go up to him at first, um, but I'd met Rich and the McPhillips boys back in Topeka and, and a few other times. So they were like, no, just come in. Like, don't even worry about all of that. Ignore it, you know, talk to Tony. Um, so he was really cool. We struggled with that car that weekend, unfortunately. We had some electrical issues and we didn't qualify the best. So we did have Tony Stewart first round. Um, Unfortunately, we didn't get the win, but down the bottom end, you know, I jumped out and I'd run a PB um, and Tony was the first person to congratulate me, to call me over, to give me a time slip. So he was really great, like gracious about the whole thing. And honestly, I came back with some really cool stories. So happy about it. Very cool. Yes, this particular trip, you were able to go to the quickest and fastest that you've ever gone in your career. You did it first at Tri-State Raceway, then went on to Maple Grove, performed even better because performance picks up their period. I don't care who you are. Yeah. That is just a fabulous Play. surface and just great air always. Oh yeah. I the, When we first got there and I went for a drive in the buggy to, you know, have a look at the track and make sure I was familiar with everything. I was so surprised at the temperature difference from the start line to when you get to the finish line, just the cool air from all the trees lining the track. I was like, this is a fast race track. I like this place. This is cool. <laughs> For sure, for sure. Well, look, I want to close out really talking about American drag racing and you over here in the United States of America doing it with a couple of questions. And then let's turn the focus to what I really want to talk about, and that's yourself down there and home, down under in Australia, yeah. drag racing uh, there. So first, your estimation of the differences from Australia to the United States of America in drag racing. Drag racing in the US is just on a bigger scale. That That's the most noticeable thing. Higher car entries, you know, bigger crowds, a lot more tracks, a lot more events. Everything is just done bigger. I don't want to say better because Australia does things great, but we just don't do it on the same scale. So the, the most noticeable difference is purely just how big it all is. Yeah, be careful. Don't say better because I personally yeah. do like how... And I don't know. I don't know what particular sanctioning body it is, but I love how pro alcohol is handled down under with everything kind of running against each other. I really, I really like that format. It's that cool. Would be, it would be interesting to see here. It reminds me of Nitro Chaos and Funny Car Chaos that right. I participate in. It's very interesting. Yeah. So your plans next year to get back here to the states? Anything? I'll let you know. Obviously, everyone knows that Julie now is signed on with Randy for the full season. So he will have two full-time drivers next year. He wants to win another championship, whether it's with hopefully with Julie, if not, maybe the person in the second car which will be full-time. Once that is all, I guess, announced and signed off, um, Randy lets all these other drivers and there's a long list of us know what's available. Um, and fingers crossed I can grab a couple of events off him and come back. Um, but yeah, that's, that's sort of in a 
hold at the moment. We'll wait and see what, what Randy does. And I know he wants to get the funny car back out at some point. He's a busy man with a lot of drivers. <laughs> yes. Yes, he is. He is. But he, he's retired. So he's got more time. Right? Yeah. yeah right. He sold right. his business when I was there. And right. we were like, Randy, what is happening? What? Right. Yeah, it was right. really cool. So he's retired. He's got more time. Therefore, no excuses. So let's get you back. <laughs> yeah. Randy, call me. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. For sure. For sure. All right. Let's transition to down under home and first let's just begin with what do you do professionally you're not a professional drag racer in the sense that you're making your living out of it though i know that there's probably aspirations hopes and dreams and even working towards such a situation in life so what do you do so i work for a medical devices company so technically i sell medical equipment i'm the territory manager for a couple of states here, Victoria and Tasmania. So I take care of um, the public safety aspect of um, a medical devices company, mainly respiratory products. So things like AEDs, ventilators, things like that. All right, sales medical equipment, very cool. Yeah, I will not go with the any Tasmanian jokes here. We'll... No, don't do that. But I did <laughs> used to work, um, I used to work for Pfizer and it was a lot more fun because I could say I was a legal drug dealer not a drug dealer anymore. Now I yes. sell equipment. So I've yes. got to get a new joke for it, but I haven't, haven't figured right. it out yet. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Legal drug dealer for sure. For sure. That's, that's a good way to, good way to handle it. And I thought so. Uh, you know, granted you talking about drug dealing, you know, you are importing uh, food internationally, was able to sa sample some of the uh, food from Australia there in, in Iowa. And they were all very good. I mean, the, the, the ch I'll say crackers, don't know what i can't remember what you called them shapes but, they they yeah. if anyone knows aren't it shapes i brought over some vegemite flavored shapes which were good they were good i, I, thought so. I don't i don't understand the fear people have of yeah that was a very subtle vegemite flavor we're gonna have to get you some real vegemite next time i agree we, well we we explained that dilemma you know mr tucker has not helped me in like remembering to bring vegemite to the track and they haven't ran in a while in pro stock. Not sure what happened yeah. with their deer, but deal. But he explained to me there's a right way and a wrong way. And the right way apparently is not just Vegemite, but it's like toast, butter, and Vegemite. Correct. Yes, that's the way you do it. Thank we'll you. have to make you some next time, whether it's Shane yeah. or me, some someone or I don't know, maybe the Noonans. Good point. Good point. Which, oh, by the way, I was listening to your little top alcohol update. I mean, maybe that's another car we'll see next season with Renee driving with their setup. I mean, Samsons have been going well with Noonan Power. They have. They have. I wouldn't they be surprised if we there. see if we see them come out. Very well could be a case there. Look, the storylines in Top Alcohol Dragster, there there really has not been a better time to be in that class. To, yeah. to like for yourself, a young lady aspiring to do more in drag racing, come over to the States, get more exposure. That's a great place to do it because top alcohol dragster has so many great storylines from tony now angel san pay right and it's everything so cool. else. And, and i have heard that the announcements are not done there are still big announcements coming for top alcohol dragster so it's pretty cool it's pretty cool time well that's exciting i'm excited to hear what they are very cool I, me too me too i'm mr <laughs> alcohol and no one's told me i'm disappointed no i'm joking i'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> so down there in australia look things seem to be going well i know at one time here stateside we would hear news from australia and it sounded like drag racing was on its deathbed with the uh, sanctioning body splitting and this series having you know a sponsor pull out and just all the infighting that seemed to be happening and going on but here recently there has been a lot of good things for drag racing in australia one of the most recent a new track opened and i know one day at least had over 20 something thousand in attendance and you were in attendance so give us the breakdown of this new facility yeah so it's called the bend because it's at a place called Taylor bend there isn't a bend in the track um brand new facility um it looks really great i was had the opportunity to go there for the opening um they got a little bit unlucky on one day with some bad weather. We had some really strong winds and a little bit of rain. So there was a bit of dust on the track. So it was a bit unsafe. We didn't get through all the runs, which obviously diminished having two days with a massive crowd. 
Um, but they did sell out. There was over 20,000 people there. I think over the couple of days, they had maybe close to 35, 36,000, which was awesome. Um, and the track itself is great. Obviously, you know, as time goes on, this was their first big event. It will get better. There's a few areas that are a little dusty around the track, which wasn't helping. So I think once those are, you know, make, turned into grass or sealed, um, hopefully they'll have less impact from the wind and less impact on the track, on the racing surface. But overall, you know, the crowd loved it. It was the first time they'd had, you know, a great racetrack in Adelaide in a while. Um, so it's in South Australia. And it's about, I think it's about an hour from the CBD. Um, but it, it went really well from a crowd perspective for drag racing. It was on NHRA TV. It was on one of our free-to-air channels here, which was cool. So it was live streamed. Um, and good things are happening in Australian drag racing. So it's good to see. And good to hear. You know, I firmly believe that the Australians may have maybe not a larger call car culture but maybe a more defined and enthusiastic car culture than even here in the united states of america there's so much down there that i envy like v8 supercars oh my yeah. goodness the way in which you all run pro alcohol as we mentioned uh the the right. gentleman with it looks like the batmobile literally i know means, you love russell you know, mills's car i love that love thing I, I want it won I want to see on it. the weekend I, the, the, the what did you know he won pro alcohol on the weekend no i didn't I, he won Man, I got to get him on the show. I got to get him on the yeah, show. Yeah, Russell Mills is great. You should reach out to him. I think he ran like maybe like low 540s. He won in the final over Steve Reed in a funny car. Um, he went 004 red. Like they're cutting good lights. I think Russell went 016. Like alcohol here is good um, and it's fun because it is a bit of a mix. You don't know what you're going right. to get as you've seen right. with Russell Mills's car. But, yeah, he, he, won, he won the national meet. Very cool. Very cool. Yes, I've got to get down and uh, do some top alcohol reports for Monday morning racing yeah. in Australia. I got to get that worked out. That would be yeah. uh, exceptionally cool with the way in which uh, they do it and then be down there and just have Vegemite while I'm there. Now, yeah. you were in competition this past weekend as well. We had you scheduled to come on last Thursday, but well, qualifying got in the way and glad that it did. So, how did you do this past weekend? I wish I had a good story to tell, but made a driver error in first round. The car ran great, so I was pretty disappointed in myself. We ended up having a lot of rain that weekend. Um, it would have been really good, good to see a big crowd at Sydney for the Nitro Funny Cars. We had Tommy Johnson out there, which was really cool. Um, but we had a lot of rain that weekend. First day kind of got cancelled. Everyone got one shot and then straight into eliminations, even for the big show guys. Um, it, but we have a lot of events scheduled. The new... So I guess the new group running drag racing in Australia, the National Drag Racing Championship, the NDRC, it's a combination of both sanctioning bodies at all the different tracks running for one Australian championship, which is why I think we'll see bigger car counts, bigger fields. It's just going to be bigger altogether. A lot more fans are going to show up because there's more to see. Um, the way they're doing it looks really good, and I think we'll have some really big events coming up. You know, Drag Racing Mayhem, he says that Australian and European pro mod is gold. And I, I will say, I do love, you know, Top Slammer. I love it. I yeah. love it. Like, it just the way it, I, it, I mean, not wrong with pro mod, but Slammer. I love how it's. it's the name's I cool. It. I mean, yeah, you cool. would love the stories down here in Slammer. At the bend, um, Ronnie Palumbo made the final. He was in the AC Delco um, door slammer owned by Morris Fabietti. Um, earlier this year, we lost Sam Fennick uh, driving for that team. And that was their first event back. Ronnie's a new driver in that car. Sam was basically like an uncle to him and he made the final. And that was really cool. There's some good things happening in Slammer, in Pro Mod. The cars in Pro Mod, they're really cool. Like you should, if you haven't seen it, you should jump on NHRA TV and have a look at the runs from the weekend. There's some wild rides. Oh, they are. They are. And beautiful race cars. And there's yeah. different race cars. It has, at least in NHRA Pro Mod, become such a homogeneous field. It's Camaro of one type or the other. And then if you do bring some old school body out, you are well behind the field. But that doesn't quite seem to be the case with Top Slammer. It's a lot of different yeah. body styles. And they definitely uh, run them out down there, down under. Hey, Greg Wilson asks you... Do you have any plans to race pro alcohol at home? That would be really cool, but I have no plans to announce at the moment. Okay. Okay. 
I do love pro alcohol. It's a great class. Okay. Okay. And you know, with, with mentioning that one reason why you even do what you do over here in the States is apparently there's not much injected nitro down there. Yeah. I, I, I could be wrong, but I think injected nitro only got added to the rule books in Australia to run in pro alcohol two years ago. Um, at the time, there wasn't anyone competitively competing with an injected nitro set up in pro alcohol. There still isn't. There is a couple of cars here now, um, but none of them have taken it out on the national circuit yet. We haven't really seen that happen. Very interesting that it hasn't caught on quite as it has here. I mean, it's dominating yeah. here. And many would argue that, oh, the class has been ruined, except, you know, I mean, Sean Cowie just went a 518 in testing and, you know, with low ET of testing thus far. So cool. I, mean, I can't see it right now, but I mean, and then he went like a 512 this past weekend. I mean, Damn. Yeah, yeah, people people know with the, the methanol combination how to get it done too. So exactly. Yeah. I mean, I do know that it's been a goal of Randy's and I think he's pretty public about it, that he does want to bring a car down under. Um, that is now that he's retired, something that he's going to work towards bringing a car over. Um, and hopefully that will ignite that class here. Hopefully it'll show people what you can do, how you can run. I think it will also help the sanctioning bodies with refining the rules around it, how to make it competitive, given that funny cars, they all run together. We don't have enough cars to have separate fields. So how do we make it fair to have the drags and the funny cars together? I think that would be tremendous. You get someone like a Randy Meyer down there in Australia and help set up rules, help set up racing and help kind of further along that different combination and add in that wrinkle to pro alcohol. I think that would uh, be good. Granted, there may very well still be some sentiments even down there of, oh, if we let the cat out of the bag fully, we'll never get it back in. Granted, 100%. It, it, I think that's just the nature of racing. People, when they're unfamiliar with something, they tend to dislike it and they think that it's going to be yeah. an advantage over what they already know. People are hesitant for change. They're always a bit scared. They're unsure. Um, but I think, you know, even if he came down and did some exhibition passes and worked with the teams down here to sort of get it established, I think that could be a cool way to do it. And Randy's been to Australia a fair few times. He likes it here. So he's welcome back anytime. Let's talk about your ride in particular and what you are drag racing back home. So this dragster, what class, what does it compare to here in the States? Yeah, so my car runs in a class called Modified Eliminator. Um, it's a little bit, I guess, similar. It's kind of an open class, maybe similar to a super comp, but we don't have an index. It's purely dial your own racing. Um, you might be up against a blown altered. You might be running a turbo altered, a nitrous drag star it's a whole you know varied field of cars but it's all dial your own racing um so i race in yeah like i said modified eliminator it runs 770s over the quarter about 176 mile an hour um but it's it's a consistent car which is what we want when we're bracket racing uh, certainly consistency is key in bracket racing and now you're part of a family operation. So what is the family's background in drag racing? Who is the principal one that really kind of set the roots for yourself to be a drag racer and be in motorsports? Yeah, my dad. So I think the first time I went to the racetrack, I was I had a pretty traditional drag racing story. I was, you know, three months old, went and watched dad race. We, you know, grew up at going to the drags. Me and my sister started racing junior dragsters when Sydney Dragway opened. Um, so I want to say 20 years ago, 21 years ago, something like that. Um, and then from there, you know, my, me and my sister continued to race. We both went into modified. So she had a dragster as well. She's sort of taken a step away from drag racing at the moment and she's just doing her own thing. Um, but she still comes out and helps me. And one day I'm hoping I'll get her back in a car. Um, but yeah, it was a big family thing for if I don't know if you've ever heard of Dragster Australia, the magazine that used to run out of here, but that was my family business for a long time. So we were all things drag racing. You know, I was a kid, I was interviewing people, I was doing all that side of stuff, running around, picking photos to go in the editorials. And yeah, it was really cool. Interesting. I did not know that. Fascinating that you all yeah. 
were a part of that. And is I mean, I, the way in which you just described that, I take it that the magazine you all either sold that off or it isn't any more. Yeah, my more. my family closed that down. I mean, print went away, mm -hmm. and yeah. you know that was it was a long a long time thing, and it just at the time didn't have the capacity to translate it into something else. Um, so yeah, that sort of went away. But my whole life has basically been at the racetrack and just growing up around the sport. All right. Spectacular. Spectacular. Yeah. Well, look, we're going to close things down with you as we begin to wind down. It's getting later for me. What time is it for you, by the way? You're in the future. You're at Friday. I'm it's still Friday, early. 12 o'clock. So it's lunchtime tomorrow for me. Wow. Wow. I can't wait to get to lunch <laughs> tomorrow, whatever it is. But I got dinner tonight. Looking forward to that. Now, you obviously follow drag racing intently their home but you follow it here as well so yes your favorite drivers in nhra camping world oh don't make me do that okay so it does change but i will say i am so keen to see doug kalita win a championship that's who i'm backing i'd love to see it don't get me wrong i'm all for the girls love leah love steve -O. they were great to me when i was there but he's done everything and he hasn't got one. And I just remember watching his face when he lost it by a few points a few years back. And I'm just like, oh. So at the moment, I'm very much a Doug Kalita girl. I I think most of the drag racing world is just a Doug see Kalita it. girl or Doug Kalita yeah. boy. We just like, please, please. Please, right? We're like, give it and, to him, please. And, and then Connie can die in peace. And the drag racing world can move on. No, <laughs> everything will be as it's meant to be. We will yes. all be happy. Yes. I, the yeah, rainbow will be... come over the sky. There will be the pot of the gold at <laughs> end. You know, and the Lord can come on back. I mean, it just yeah. everything. It's, it's we're good. Yeah, we're good. You'd be hard pressed to find someone I think who isn't. It's somewhat a little bit kind of hoping it's Doug's time. Yeah. So I would love to see that. Um, but yeah, I'm a big Ron Caps fan. I think he's really cool. He's been in Australia a few times and it's been really cool to meet him. Love Clay Milliken, obviously. He's not only does he have an Aussie helping tune his car, but he's just, you know, so friendly and approachable. Um, but everyone was great to me that I met. So it was kind of weird to meet people in person that I had seen and idolized on TV and watched. Yeah. Um, and they were all really cool. I was very, very impressed. It is. I grew up as a Ron Caps fan. And one of the first people I ever interviewed at an NHRA national event was Ron Caps. You know, just walked mm. up, no media credentials, and just using to my advantage that every ticket is a pit pass. And hey, can I get an interview? And I get an interview with him. And it's it's very interesting that Ron Caps will acknowledge me out there even to this day and knows who I am. Hey, man, how you doing? And and like, so and cool. I, I grew up watching this dude. You know right That's, like it's weird like i'm like when i was over there even talking to some of the top alcohol people and like i i was you know met maddie Payne and her her team and all of them and i was like oh my god i've been watching these guys online for years like this is so cool right so yeah it's it's, it's different but um yeah go dog all right so we are we know obviously that gage herrera he's going to be the 2023 pro start motorcycle champion more than like, I mean, more than likely, we're looking at Erica Enders being the 2023 pro, pro stock champion. Yes. You've already given your sentiments that you'd like to see Doug Coletta win the championship in top fuel. That leaves fuel funny car. What are your thoughts between Matt Hagen, Bob Tasca, and Robert Hyde? Robert Hyde. Yeah. I'm intrigued to see how it plays out. I think. I hope it goes into, I don't know how far can it go before someone's won it. I hope it's not just set on qualifying. I hope we have to see it play oh, out in eliminations. In, it's going to go into eliminations. Okay, perfect. So yeah. I'm excited to see it play out. Um, oh, I don't know. I mean, I feel like Bob Tasker would kind of be a cool story, but also so would Hagen with the whole Tony Stewart racing. We've seen Robert do it a few times. Hmm. I'm going to go... From the outside, I'll go Tasca. Let's see him get it done. Okay, Tasca, Tasca, Tasca wins Tasca. his first ever first NHRA ever. Camping World Fuel Funny Car Championship. Okay. I mean, how cool would that be, Doug and Tasca, two first timers? That would be cool. That I mean, that'd be a cool story. Would be. 
would be. The, we'll the Leah Pruitt, <laughs> Matt Hagen championship double up would be a good story as well. That would be a very good story. Yeah. Say so, no matter what way you throw it, it's a good story. Um, right. Then you can also get the Doug Coletta and Robert Hyatt redemption stories. Exactly. So I think you're you're in with a good story, whichever way this folds, whichever way this plays out. Um, but we'll, we'll see. I, it'll be a good weekend of racing, that's for sure. Definitely, it will be. Well, Fiona, look, I hope that we continue to see your unfolding story be positive for you in drag racing and you continue to rise in your career. Look, thank you for your time. Thank you for coming over to the Slicks and including us in a little bit about yourself, your career, your time here in the States, and what is going down there in Australia. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. And um, hopefully next time I'm back, we can catch up. For sure. Well, look, you enjoy with the Vegemite. rest of Yes, with Vegemite. That's right. <laughs> That's right. And I can properly have what I'm you know, supposed to and enjoy it because, I, I, yeah, I'm not scared of it. Not, not like everybody else. <laughs> not like everybody else. Fiona, again, good to have you on. You enjoy the rest of your Friday. Thank you. I will. And you have a great night. McKinney Motorsports is your number one source for all your chassis needs. McKinney Motorsports is the leading chassis parts supplier and fabricator in nitro drag racing. From custom tanks and fittings, full chassis builds, body mounts, steering components, fasteners, tabs, clamps, composite parts, and much more. Our household name in the racing world guarantees added performance on the track. Join our list of proven winners that spans over 50 years of racing experience. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching Between the Slicks, episode 149, 149 here on the Monday Morning Racer platform. Also, thank you for watching on the CompetitionPlus.com Facebook page and also on the Drag Racing Connection Facebook page. To each and every one of you that watched, thank you. Please hit the like button for me. Hit the share button. Fiona Chris, thank you for your time. And... We will look forward to whoever we have next week on Between the Slicks. Dennis, I appreciate that. Thank you. Try to do and have good content here on the Monday Morning Racer platform. Concerning alcohol, as you can tell, there is a big emphasis on alcohol. I've been covering uh, this year alcohol intensely. Uh, we'll be doing that exactly with the regional action here at the Strip at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. So make sure you are subscribed to Monday Morning Racer on YouTube. You will see those videos roll out. You can also see those videos roll out on the Facebook page, Monday Morning Racer on Facebook. You can also find me on Twitter and Instagram. Again, Monday Morning Racer racer thank you all for watching thank you for sharing thank you for liking and i thank you also for commenting always good to have interaction with you all concerning the world of drag racing there was so much more to chat about that we'll have to chat about in the future such as the nhra's disqualifications missions foods being announced as the uh, series title sponsor and in HRA and their pettiness that they can have on occasion, I do want to close out the show with this and make you aware of some races this coming weekend because there is plenty of drag racing happening, well, all the time. This weekend, you can catch Southeast Gassers Association action at Shadyside Dragway for their championship finals. That's Friday, Saturday. If you're anywhere near Shelby, North Carolina, Western North Carolina, Charlotte, North Carolina, the upstate of South Carolina, those that type of area of the United States of America, this is the drag race to catch. The Southeast Gasser Association has spectacular, period correct, drag racing, and it's as stepping back into time to 1967 when drag racing was in a heyday with the great drag racing vehicles known as gassers. You'll have A-gas, V-gas, C-gas. I'm sure AFX will be on the scene with even more. And we're talking about several cars, several big fields for ABC gas there at Shadyside Dragway in Shelby, 
North Carolina. Also happening, I wrote a PR piece for this event, in particular the match race that is taking place. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me, Orlando Speed World. They're in Orlando, Florida. <coughs> Their Night of Fire Nitro Invasion will be taking place. <coughs> Excuse me. And an interesting part of that program will be Joey Haas in the Nimrod Nitro Funny Car, as you see pictured here, facing his dad, Joe Haas, in the War Wagon Nitro Funny Car. And this is one of the few times that. The Orlando Speed World fan base will have experienced Nitro. So they're going to get that a part of their Night of Fire program. So if you're in the state of Florida and you want some Nitro, you need to get your, your fix. You can get it down there at Orlando Speed World this weekend, the 4th and the 5th. And then out here on the West Coast, well, you've got regional and divisional action for the NHRA at the Strip at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Plenty of drag racing still happening. It doesn't ever stop now. There's not really an off-season. They just move to Florida or somewhere in the desert. Seems to be what happens. That's not a bad thing, though. And uh, as we heard from Fiona, drag racing is in full swing there in Australia, down under and doing well. Catch all the action that you can from there as well. Drag racing, it's not dying, folks. It's thriving, I think. This has been Between the Slicks. I'm Lee Kraft, a.k.a. the Monday Morning Racer. Until next time, God bless and keep the pedal to the metal. Power Built Tools exemplifies innovation in the tool industry. From hand tools, power tools, and even tool storage. Check out PowerBuilt.com for Power Built Tools. And remember, use promo code MMR15 for 15% off at purchase.